Welcome to a new In The Mail, the most popular segment hosted here on the channel. Lots of interesting gadgets have been piling up in my special bin, so let's take a look at them. I'm gonna start with this uh, small silicon mat. I'm sure you're familiar with these. I just wanted like a smaller one that I could fit on the work surface of my uh, microscope. This is my trinocular microscope. If you're a subscriber of the channel, you've probably seen it before. I reviewed this back in Vlog282 and I did a few upgrades since then on its video camera system. I sometimes uh, do soldering right there on the work surface, so um, it would be nice to have such a uh, silicon mat to help with uh, protecting that area and I found this model on AliExpress and it's a good size for this purpose, just a little too uh, thin for my taste. I expect this to maybe bulge. Um, immediately under the action of the hot air gun but other than that I think uh, it should do the job and um, it was very inexpensive to purchase same as always you'll find the links for all of the items shown in this video in the description below the sponsor of this video PCBWay.com is a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times you can get more than PCBs manufactured with PCBWay they also do PCB assembly, injection molding, 3D printing machining various parts so you can have an entire prototype built using their services check out their website linked below next up i have a couple of uh, interesting display modules that caught my attention while uh, casually browsing through the recommended products list this one is a uh, 1.69 inch tft display with a 240 by 280 pixel resolution so it's a fairly densely packed panel and uh, it's based on the ST7789V2 controller IC. You can get this as just the panel or as a breakout module like I have here. I opted for the breakout panel so that I could easily test this and hook it up to a dev board. It seems like it's uh, uh, wired for a uh, SPI interface on this breakout board and I guess the main features of this display panel are its uh, thin bezels left right and top are very thin uh, but of course you need a little uh, thicker bezel for the uh, one side where the flat flex is located because there you also have the driver ic and the backlight plus the bonding on the flat flex so that that area needs to be thicker but nonetheless a quite an interesting display the next display comes from the same company making these uh, breakout boards and it's a 2.13 inch 122 by 250 pixel resolution and this is a um, TFT white and black display uh, reflective technology it's based on the ST7302 controller IC they say it's targeted for low power applications uh, I don't think there is any backlight on this it's a very thin uh, panel and once again uh, wired as SPI and you can get it as a bare LCD panel or as a breakout like I have here uh, I thought the format of this display is pretty interesting and, and once again I think we'll be seeing more projects uh, using these popping up on the internet next up I got myself another one of these uh, cheap uh, compact side cutters I've been using these for a while for uh, various jobs uh, I recently gave one to a friend so I needed a replacement they're not the best quality uh, but they're decent enough and I like the form factor a lot um, useful for cutting off through uh, through hole component terminals but also for the small size wires and other miscellaneous stuff do yourself a favor and order at least two of these next I got one of these which is like a uh, rust uh, cleaning fiber pen and the way this works is you spin this end cap which pushes some of the uh, fiber bundle through the tip of the pen and and these are pretty abrasive so you can use it to rub off some superficial rust of small items like jewelry watches but well i thought this could be useful is of course for electronics for cleaning up some small areas of, of pcbs where you need to clean maybe some burn marks or uh, some corrosion something like that i'm not sure how how long the fibers inside of here are because that's going to determine how long this is going to last but I thought that this would be an interesting uh, addition to my set of cleaning tools links for this are in the description below the video so check them out next I ordered myself a set of these silicone dispensing heads 
which kept popping up in, in my ads. I'm not even sure how they're supposed to attach to a silicon tube dispenser. Uh, maybe you just try to cut the tube to a matching diameter and then like press fit it in here. Their picture also shows some kind of heat shrink being used. So I guess at the very least you could use some like electrical tape to try and seal this on the end of the silicone tube. They're supposed to help you get that perfect finish when applying silicone sealant into corners. And personally, I've had some good results with the like the small silicone spatulas uh, with different angles. But um, I was wondering if these could maybe help get that perfect application first go without the need of uh, smearing it all over with a spatula. And I guess that might be possible uh, if you have done enough applications and you get a feel for it. But for amateurs like um, myself that only do it once every year or so, it's a bit more difficult to, to get it right first go. Next, I got a couple of these uh, brightly colored paracord lines for general purpose usage. There's nothing special, these are cheap and I, ju I just like the white color options that I get on AliExpress for this kind of stuff versus the local sports store where this stuff is slightly more expensive and comes with fewer color options. Next up, I got a couple more options for these um, hard shell EVA carry cases. And uh, these can be great when, when traveling for, you know, storing various small items, jewelry, GoPro accessories like batteries and SD cards. It can help protect it while inside your backpack for a trip. And also some of the cheaper test instruments or measurement devices that we might get from places like AliExpress sometimes don't come with the carry case. Uh, so something like this could work uh, very nicely for that purpose. Next up, I thought I'd try these uh, silicon wire DuPont uh, jumper wires. Now, I think I paid slightly over $5 for a set of eight pieces. So they're kind of expensive when compared to the regular PVC ones. But as expected, they do feel uh, much nicer uh, being built with silicon cables. And there are different sets that you can order. Maybe it's cheaper if you get more. Uh, what can I say? Expensive, but they do feel pretty nice. One thing that I would have uh, liked to see for this uh, amount paid is some kind of markings on the uh, silicon wire they used, but you know, they saved a few pennies on that by going for the cheaper wire with no markings. Next up, uh, I have a couple of interesting modules which uh, I've had for a while, but never got to building anything with them. Uh, these are the BU-01 uh, ultra wideband modules and these are based on the DecaWaves DW-1000 chip which is like this single chip solution ultra wideband transceiver capable of doing two-way ranging, location tracking uh, that's down to a precision of 10 centimeters. So they're not exactly cheap but I wouldn't say they're expensive either because the market is fairly limited when it comes to fully integrated uh, ultra wideband modules. And these can really help you build a product much easier without having to deal with the complicated uh, RF stuff. And if you'd like to know more about these, just check out the links I'm gonna place in the description below. Next up, I have a few, you could call random ESP32 based development boards that I wanted to add to my collection. For example, I didn't have an ESP32 C3 board and I got this one which uh, has a C3 and I think it's just an RGB LED on here for fun. Uh, it uses the older micro USB connector, which is not as nice, but you know, for a cheap development board that I'm just gonna power up to test something at some point, I can live with that. I also didn't have an ESP32 S2 dev board, so I got this one. Um, it comes with the original uh, ESP32 S2 room module from Espressive. It has a USB Type-C, which is nice. There are a few dip switches in here and one of them controls whether the USB port is a host or a device. The other one controls whether you have a uh, crystal or just GPIO access uh, for a certain pair of uh, pins. I also didn't have an ESP32 Ethernet development board and I found this uh, cheap one it does use a custom ESP32 module from uh, this company called the Wireless Tag, but I'm hoping it's nothing special and uh, it will just run as a standard ESP32 room module from Espressif. As you can see, it the pins got a little bit bent during uh, shipping because it, they didn't 
use like any foam for for protection like uh, they did on this one but that's an easy fix the board uses the LAN A8720A uh, Ethernet transceiver which is uh, pretty popular and um, supported by many libraries so it should be fairly easy to use this in, in a project. I don't think the board itself is open source but you do get a fairly comprehensive data sheet for both the uh, board and the ESP32 module uh, with lots of uh, useful information to get you started. And the last item in this um, video is once again an interesting find from AliExpress. Uh, it is a capacitor discharge tool. Uh, they even give you the schematics on the packaging, which uh, is very nice of them. And as someone who has worked on uh, switch mode uh, power supply during repairs, I remember that I could never get used to the loud pops of you know, me shorting big uh, capacitors with a uh, screwdriver uh, before handling the uh, PCB. So I remember uh, I, I built this uh, two watt resistor covered in heat shrink and I was using that to quickly discharge the capacitors without dealing with that uh, loud bang. So now you can get something like this that comes with uh, a pair of pogo pins and, and this circuit will take care of discharging your capacitors while at the same time uh, providing a visual feedback because it has an LED to let you know when the voltage is uh, close to zero. Now the specs of the unit says you should use it up to 680 microfarad and 380 volts AC or 540 volts DC. So that's a fairly wide range of uh, usage for this uh, tool and um, they also include like a spare pogo pin on the back. I don't do repairs uh, these days as much so this will hardly get any usage but you know an, an interesting tool nonetheless for discharging capacitors. That was all for today I hope it was interesting to watch and let me know in the comments below if you ordered any of these items same as always links for all of the products shown here will be placed in the description so do check them out. Thank you for watching, don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month or you can simply hit that like button which is free but helps a lot. I'll be seeing you next time.